In this video, we are going to use the shader graph to create interactive materials. In particular, we will show how to create a shake effect and a dissolve effect. If you are not familiar, shader graph is a visual shader editor. It is node-based, allowing you to build and see the results of your custom shaders in real time without the need for writing code. It's available in Unity scriptable render pipeline. It can be used with the high definition render pipeline or HDRP and from Unity 2019.3 with the standard and default renderer called Universal Render Pipeline. The Universal Render Pipeline replaces and enhances the lightweight render pipeline. Interactive effects, like shaking, could be achieved using a C-sharp script. Why then do we create them with the shader instead? Because shaders work on GPU, it can be a better use of performance resources. In general, many of Unity's bottlenecks are on the CPU, so delegating these effects to the GPU can be faster and improves performance. In this starting scene, we have a crate with a standard universal lit material on it. The material has an opaque surface type and has the crate's textures assigned. Let's switch the material shader from lit to a custom shader we've created called interactive material. As you can see, swapping doesn't mean we lose all the texture configurations we have made. This is possible by keeping the same reference name between different shaders, or more generally, by following a matching naming convention. In this case, all the properties of our custom shader that we want to preserve, such as underscore base map, underscore base color, and so on, have the same reference name that they have in the universal lit shader. To see the property name of a built-in shader, you can right-click on the material header and choose Select Shader. Names are preceded by an underscore. Now, let's take a look at the interactive material shader. We have a PBR master node filled by a node subgraph called PBR inputs. We'll explore the shake and dissolve nodes later. A subgraph is a part of a shader graph that has been encapsulated and saved in an external asset. This is helpful for various reasons. First, it enhances reusability. You can save subgraphs with common functionality and reuse them across all your shaders. It decreases the complexity of a graph by removing parts and hiding them in another cleaner node, and it improves team workflows since people are able to work on subgraphs individually, avoiding conflicts. You can define inputs of a subgraph by declaring parameters in the Blackboard and adding any type of output by clicking the cog icon in the output node. Both input and output parameters are nameable, reorderable, and support all types. Also, subgraphs can be nested indefinitely. A good example of nesting is in our PBR inputs subgraph. As you can see, it is actually a container of multiple other subgraphs. The sampler texture subgraph is simple. It applies the tiling and offset to the input texture and multiplies its base color for a custom input tint avoiding modifying the alpha channel. You can see that we are using the same subgraph to sample the albedo, emission, metallic, and occlusion maps. The normal map has another subgraph because we don't need to tint it and the sample texture 2D node has to be set to normal type. All the outputs of these subgraphs are linked to the output node, so we can use them in our interactive material graph. Only the output value of the metallic sampler texture node needs some further explanation. This texture was created with the channel packing technique. This means that each channel of the texture contains a different grayscale image. In this case, the red channel contains the metallic map and the alpha channel contains the smoothness map. With a split node, we obtain the single channels and then we adjust their value by multiplying them with two flow properties. Now our custom shader is very similar to the built-in lit shader. In fact, swapping between them doesn't change the result. Now let's dive in to the shake effect subgraph. Here we have some math operations to move vertices along a sine wave, and we can adjust the frequency and amplitude of the movement thanks to two exposed parameters. Since the movement happens through many frames, the timer underscore one-way subgraph is important here. We just need to pass in a starting time, for example, from a C-sharp script or from an animator, and it takes care of calculating the playtime. In this case, it plays the effect for one second. The dissolve subgraph uses the same logic. 
passing a start time to the timer underscore two ways node, which is a bit more complex because with a Boolean value and a branch node, we decide if the timer is playing forward or backward, we obtain a float value that changes frame by frame the amount of visible texture of a simple noise node. We also use this value to handle the emission, which is coloring an extra offset edge around the alpha area of the noise. To trigger the effects, we create a C-sharp script where we listen for keyboard inputs. Pressing 2 sets the start time of the shake effect, while pressing 1 sets the start time and Boolean value of the dissolve effect. As you can see, since the effects are linked to different branches of the shader, we can play them concurrently without problem. And because we encapsulated the timers themselves into subgraphs, we can reuse them in other interactive shaders to create a wide array of different interesting effects. In fact, the timers are generic subgraphs that are just tweening a value over time and are not hard-coded to a specific effect. You can use them to drive colors, texture properties, or as we've done here, transparency and vertex position. Creating interactive materials with the shader graph can really add to your game by providing not only interesting visual effects, but also precious visual feedback to the player, which is fundamental to create a great experience. And with subgraph reusability, you can speed up your material creation process, unlock creativity, and organize the work in your team. To download the example project shown and learn more, follow the link in the description below. We're excited to see your creations. Thanks for watching.